Stephen A., I want to start with you. Who do you like more this season, Foles in Chicago or Wentz back in Philly? Well, I like Foles in Chicago because I think that Chicago's defense is elite um, and they just need a quarterback with the magic to get some things done in key moments. Uh, Mitchell Drabitsky is not a scrub, but he comes up small on too many occasions. Um, and obviously that that's led to a heightened level of criticism aimed in his direction because also you got to remember the stigma that comes attached to Mitchell Drabitsky. It's just undeniable. The Chicago Bears not only passed up on Deshaun Watson, and Patrick Mahomes, not in that order, Mahomes first and then Patrick Mahomes. In order to get Mitchell Trubisky, they actually moved up in the draft to do it. <laughs> and so when you look at it from that perspective, anytime somebody knowing football the way Chi-Town does with that rabid fan base, to know that Patrick Mahomes or Deshaun Watson could have been your quarterback, every time you look at Mitchell Trubisky, you're measuring him against them whether directly or indirectly, subliminally or, or, di or directly. It does not matter. That's what you're doing. And so the arrival of Nick Foles changes that to some degree. He's his own man, per se, having led the Philadelphia Eagles to a Super Bowl championship, beating Tom Brady in the Super Bowl in the process. <clears throat> then the following year, when Carson Wentz goes down again after going 5-6 and six and 11 games, Nick Foles resurrects their season, guides them to the playoffs, and a playoff victory over the Chicago Bears. You got to look at those two years. Nick Foles is somebody they remember all too well. They know he's proven he can get it done. And he doesn't have the veneer of Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson hovering over him. I think that's a plus. I think that puts Chicago in a better position than it puts Philadelphia right now. And that's why I would say Nick Foles to Chicago is the better thing to look forward to. Ready for this, Stephen A.? Carson Wentz with the yes, Eagles. Sir. Let me tell you something. I know I'm known as the anti-Wentz guy or the anti-Brady guy. I ain't anti-Brady. I'm just, it's not that I'm pro-father time. I just acknowledge that brother's undefeated father time. Never lost. Bernard Hopkins almost fought him to a draw, but even B-Hop eventually lost to father time. So that's what the Brady stuff is about. The Wentz stuff, the reason I'm perceived that way is because I have high expectations for Wentz. And I see the way unconsciously people lower it for Wentz. He, had, he regressed badly last year. Even at the end of the season when people were all high on him, he was playing the worst division in history and faring worse against those teams than other quarterbacks who were nothing to write home about were faring in his own division. So, uh, so he, may, he would follow up impossibly great throws that only maybe Mahomes or one or two other guys can make. Rodgers with bad football decisions, bad execution, et cetera. It was happening a lot. Th so, so that's why I was down on Wentz. But never mistake this. Carson Wentz is an all-world talent. The reason I'm down, I'm down on him is he should be top five. So if he's top 12, top 14, that ain't good enough. You paid him to be top five. He's shown you he can perform at top five levels, and my money has got to be on that guy entering his prime. Folds to the Bears I love because you have an athletic quarterback who's underachieved in Trubisky. Foles competes with him, and at any rate, you can, you know, pushes him and can always take over the reins, particularly with the money on the line, familiar coaching staff, all that stuff. It's a great signing for Chicago. But if the question point blank is, Who's more to look forward to? It is a top five talent in Philadelphia that we've already seen perform at MVP level. I once again have high expectations for Carson Wentz, and I intend on holding him to them. Yeah, who am I looking forward to? Who do I think, you know, would you look forward to seeing play this year more so? Look, I'm, I'm going to say Carson Wentz, although I'm going to talk about Chicago as soon as I say this about Carson Wentz. You have to understand that the situation and the circumstances that this young man was asked to perform under last year in terms of how many weapons he lost and how every single week Doug Peterson was putting together a game plan from scratch with people who really he had to teach from scratch exactly what to do and had no margin for error in terms of his play calling in order to get people to be exactly where they needed to be and Carson every week was having to play above and beyond what he normally would have to play because of the lack of weaponry. What he did last year, putting that football team in his back, 
throwing for the amount of yards that he threw for under the circumstances he had to throw them and still getting them into the playoffs is nothing short of extraordinary. If you talk to anybody in that organization, it's, and namely you talk to that head coach, what Carson Wentz did last year with very, very minimal weaponry is extraordinary. Flat out extraordinary. They won't let that happen again as a front office. They can't let that happen again. And here in the second wave of free agency and then on to the draft, I promise you, they better after. Oh, look, they got Darius Slay today, and they needed to do that as far as shoring up their secondary, particularly on the corner. But they better get Carson Wetz some weaponry. They can't have a repeat of last year. You cannot waste this kid. He is special. Now, that being said, let's go to Chicago. You guys know how I feel about Chicago. You know how I feel about Matt Nagy. Everybody knows how I have felt about Mitch Trubisky. And right now, people are waiting to pounce and go, what happened to your boy Maserati Mitch? How come you didn't take... Okay, you know what? Last year in the middle of the season, I acknowledged. I said, look, something's not clicking with this young man. Something is not clicking. Matt Nagy can see that something's not clicking. The only thing that he has left right now, considering the expectations that they have in Chicago for 2020, is to do this. Bring in somebody who can push him in a way that a coaching staff can't push him, meaning this. Now you got somebody who may take your job. Now you got somebody who knows this offense maybe better than you. Now you have somebody who has played under the most pressure-packed of circumstances better than you've ever played. So you better show us whether if you're going to stick your chest out and take control of this team, or are you going to shrink in the corner and we're going to wind up moving you on down the road and is St. Nick going to be a hero for not one franchise but two franchises because I'll tell you this also about Nick Foles don't let that mild mannered very team oriented demeanor fool you there's a reason why this young man restructured his contract so he could still so he could opt out of this deal within the next two years if he hits certain performance metrics you know why he did that because he expects to play so anybody who's sitting there going Nick is the perfect backup he's just there to support Mitch Trubisky no, he's not. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.